I've taken the pie dough out of the refrigerator, unwrapped it. Nice and firm, perfectly cylindrical, and uh, it weighs a perfect 32 ounces, which is pretty good. So, what I would like to do is show you how to make an apple crustade. A crustade is an open-faced tart or tartlet. And to do that, the first thing we need to do is portion this into approximately four ounce pieces. We want to avoid chip, 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 weighing it until we get the right amount of weight. But I know that this weighs 32 ounces, so that could be about half. That means that that's 16 and that's 16. So if this is 16, that's about 8 and 8. And that's 4, 4, 8. I think we'll go maybe like a little bit less than 4 ounces. And let's see how we did. Ooh, 3.9 ounces. Beautiful. Uh, let's see if I can do that again. Seven point eight. There it is. Two portions at four ounces a piece. Let's go for three. There's twelve. And there is fifteen and three quarters. Let's just take a little bit more. There it is. Sixteen ounces. And we have the rest of our dough left. So, there are our four portions, which I'll make into four apple croustades. I've dusted my countertop with a little bit of bread flour, coated the portion of pie dough, and now I'm going to begin to work this dough into a flat, maybe about six inches or so in diameter. And this gives me an opportunity to talk to you about a very important rule in baking and working with pastry doughs, pie dough, cinnamon bun dough, any type of dough that could be sticky. If when you're working it, you find that the dough is not moving, you can see that that dough is moving. If you get to the point where that dough is not moving, that means it's pretty much stuck. And you need to pick that up, put down some flour, and put the dough down. With my hand, I'm trying to keep it round because round is the shape we're after. I'm doing this with my hand. Of course, you could use a rolling pin. When you use a rolling pin, a little bit of pressure because the dough is kind of soft. Don't go off the edge. Don't go off the edge. Up to the edge, back, and then turn the dough going this way, and that will flatten out the dough and keep it even. Thin is good when it comes to these crustades. We want the crustade shell, the pie dough, to hold the ingredients and not be the main focus. It's a contributor to it, of course, but we don't want somebody who's eating this to be eating so much crust. Okay, so nice and thin, about like that. There's one. I'm going to set that aside. I'll take a second one. Nice and gentle. Turn it. Keep it round. Your hand can exert plenty of pressure to do this the right way. But if you want to, you can always use a rolling pin. Back and forth. Turn it back and forth. If 
It isn't happening here, but sometimes when you're rolling out a dough, you'll get a very irregular shape. And that can be a problem, because if you're looking for round and you've got something that looks like the silhouette of the state of Idaho, that's not good. Uh, we have a little tiny little bit of a dip here. Maybe I can use that as an example. Take the edge of the rolling pin and put that on the trouble spot and just roll that area right out. Want to fix that? It comes right out. Nice and easy. I'm not putting any pressure on this rolling pin. Again, nice and thin. Let's see how we did. Yeah, just about the same size. Okay, so there's two. I'm going to go ahead and roll out the other two, and then I'll uh, slice up a couple of apples, and I'll show you how we put this thing together. I've got those four portions of dough rolled out. We'll make these into apple croustade, but before we do, I want to talk to you about uh, the care and feeding of a rolling pin. Wooden rolling pins should never go into the sink. Uh, the best way to take care of them is to take a cloth, make sure they're completely clean, and ready to go the next time you want to use them. This uh, particular rolling pin uh, was my grandmother's, which makes it um, probably a hundred years old or so, and it still works beautifully. I love using it. So, take good care of a wooden rolling pin, and it will take good care of you. To make the filling for the apple croustade, of course we have to have apples. These are uh, Gala apples. Uh, we're going to uh, quarter, core, slice the apples. Uh, we're going to combine the apples with some dried craisins, some cinnamon sugar, and a little bit of cubed butter onto those portioned pieces of pie dough, fold the whole thing up, and then egg wash the outside, sprinkle them with a little bit of crystal sugar, and bake them. When they come out of the oven, typically I would uh, brush the outside and the surface with some uh, apricot, melted apricot uh, jelly, which unfortunately I don't have, so we're not going to do that. So let's start with the apples. First, let's quarter the apples by putting your hand over the blade, and now you've got four quarters. I'm going to use this uh, bird beak knife. I'm going to hold the quartered apple in my palm like this, cradling it between my fingers here and the meaty part of my thumb. I'm going to choke up on the blade. I'm going to come right down. Out comes the core, and then I'm going to turn this and both push in with the knife and also in with the apple so that that peel comes off with as little of that flesh coming off as well. Notice how I'm choking up on the blade here. Something happens and it slips. I'm not putting so much pressure on the knife that, you know, I can really do some damage. Very slow. And even if I press the knife into my thumb, of course my thumb is not bleeding. So be very careful when you do this. Turn it, the knife into the apple, the apple into the knife. And that is a very effective way to dispatch one of these apples. It's also a great way to advance your knife skills. Just make sure you get all of that center core out. No one wants to bite into that. And make sure that you're putting the finished quarters in a place far away from seeds, peels, and any cores. I'm going to go ahead and finish the rest of these apples. Be back in a moment. The apples are quartered cored and peeled, 
and now I want to go about slicing them. So I'm going to take two quarters together and get slices no more than a quarter of an inch thick. Again, notice the knife technique. Knife and knuckle, always touching. I'll finish the rest, be right back. Alright, let's put together the filling for the apple crustade. I've sliced the apples. I want to add some cinnamon sugar. Give those a toss. Maybe a touch more. And now I want to add some craisins. And Two other ingredients which I think are going to brighten this whole thing up. Lemon zest and some ginger and I'll tell you about those. Alright let's talk about adding some lemon zest and some ginger to our apple, cinnamon sugar and craisin mixture. Uh, when I get app, uh, lemons I generally buy them in a large bag. I go to Costco and get a big bag of lemons. Um, if I'm going to use them right away, I do. But for the most part, what I do is I zest the lemons, cut them in half, and then juice the lemons so that I have uh, a bottle of fresh squeezed lemon juice in the refrigerator and a bag of lemon zest, which I keep in the freezer. Okay, and this way I can take it out and use it whenever I want to. With ginger, I'll buy large pieces of ginger, peel them, and then when I want to use them, Take out as much as I want. Take my rasp and very simply and you get this beautiful very fine shred of ginger that disperses throughout whatever it is you want to add them to. So that's what I'm going to do with ginger. These microplane rasps are amazing. And if you don't have one, I strongly suggest you get one. So there we have the ginger inside of the uh, apple mix. And now for the lemon zest. It's frozen and in order to break that up, same thing. Just run it along the rasp. And again, as much as you would like. This way you fully utilize a lemon and you have it for a long time to come. Otherwise, lemons in the refrigerator, ginger in the refrigerator, goes bad, wasted. There you go. All right, let's mix all of that together. I've tasted the apples, they taste appropriately sweet. And now let's put one together. When you put together the crustade, you're gonna to have to do it on the sheet tray on which they're going to bake. It's like a pizza. You make the pizza on the peel. You can't make the pizza on the counter and then try to put it on a peel. So we're gonna make it right here. So, put some of the filling 
in the center just like that. And now the folding, which makes the croustade the croustade. We bring this up, and then this one comes over, 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 over. They are a rustic product. This is not going to be something that looks like it was stamped out in a factory. Each one's going to be a little bit different. We'll take some of our cubed butter and dot it. A little bit of extra richness can never hurt. We'll give it a pinch more of the cinnamon sugar on the inside right there. And then, a little bit of egg wash, give it some color, some shine. And last, a little bit of crystal sugar, this coarse grain sugar, around the outside. Apple croustade. I'll make the rest of them up put them in the refrigerator to firm up a bit, and then we'll bake them off. The apple croustades are finished in the oven. They look amazing. If I had some apricot jelly, I would melt it and brush it along the outside to give this a really nice sweet glaze. Anyway, apple croustade made with pie dough. Pie dough made with the biscuit method, of course. Um, apple, craisin, cinnamon sugar, butter, grated ginger, lemon zest in the filling. If you have a chance, make them.